Hi everybody, welcome back to Angry Dad Gamer. And this week I'm gonna be reviewing something for your car again. It's called the Automatic. It plugs into a little port on your car and actually helps analyze your driving habits and helps you save money on gas. Does it really work? Stay tuned to find out. Damn it, these controls suck! So here's how the Automatic works. You take this little guy, plug it into what's called your ODB port, which is usually under your dashboard. The little beep tells you that it's actually plugged in and working. Then you start up your car. And you start up the automatic app. The app will show you that you're currently driving and actually shows your location. As you drive, it gives you a score based on how well you're actually doing in terms of gas efficiency. The automatic is actually set up to show you a couple of different things. First of all, it'll show you where you parked, it'll show you your gas efficiency, and the little beeps will actually warn you when you're accelerating too fast or braking too hard, both of which affect your gas efficiency. Of course, when you're driving, it's actually going to show you where you're located, but what you can see here is that it shows you the number of miles that you've been driving, and that is actually by tank of gas. So each time you fill up, it's, it's going to go over that. It shows you how many hours, shows you how much fuel you've actually, how much money you've spent on fuel, the miles per gallon that you're getting, and then this right here is your score. So the more hard braking that you do, the more hard acceleration that you do, that number is actually going to go down. And every week it resets and it sends you a notice saying, hey, you did really good or you could improve on this. So as we go, you can scroll through the list here and you can actually see that what we're looking at are all of the trips that we've logged and it shows the miles, how much it cost in gas to go somewhere and what's really cool is that it shows the hard acceleration whether or not you went to uh, under whether or not you stayed under 70 miles an hour and whether or not you did any hard braking and again all of these affect your score so here you can see that I did three hard brakes and one hard acceleration that's not good for our fuel efficiency but if we come back up here to the top we can actually go into the car mode and it'll show you how much fuel you have the range that you have left more or less and whether or not the engine actually is showing any error flags like I said this device plugs into the ODB port and it will warn you if you have certain problems that are being flagged by the engine another cool little feature is that it has a button for nearby mechanics so if you are in a, a if you do have a problem it'll actually show you that uh, it, it'll actually show you where some nearby mechanics might be um, this is something called Get License Plus. Now, License Plus is a companion app, which I did not test, but it's for if you have teenagers. So they can actually, uh, as a parent, you can actually monitor their driving habits. You can turn off the audio feedback. As you can see, you've got hard brakes, high speeds, and hard accelerations. Over here, you've got different notifications, whether or not you're actually going to get these, uh, you know, your weekly score and your exceptional trips. You can uh, say com brief stops, combines trips in the timeline if time between them is less than 15 minutes. So if you're just popping around from store to store and driving around, uh, you know, it'll, it'll account for that and just lump them all together so it's not one big trip. And then you've got trip tagging. You can say end of trip notifications. This sends a notification to tag trips as business at the end of every trip. Now that's really good if you are doing business, uh, if you're using this for business, if you travel a lot, you're a travel salesman. You can turn crash alert on, and this is kind of cool because what crash alert will do is it will uh, notify somebody in your family if there is a if there's a crash. So I actually have it set up to call my mom, and it's sort of like an emergency contact. Here it shows you the car that you've got. You can put the information in here. You can turn on your low fuel warning. You can turn in, uh, put your, uh, your VIN and all of those good things are in there. You can uh, set up another car. Of course, replace or reconnect the adapter. Here it shows you if you've got a connection. And one of the interesting things here is that sometimes my iPhone has had a problem because I didn't have it on and low power Bluetooth on the iPhone is a little bit wonky sometimes. So it will say hey, I'm trying to connect, and you can go in here. Sometimes if it doesn't automatically connect, you can go in there and try to manually connect it again. Um, what I've found that works really well is that if you just open up the app as you're getting in the car, it will always connect very well, and they recommend that as well. If it doesn't, 
a lot of times you can open up the app or even just turn on your phone as you get in the car and that will wake up the iPhone to the level to where it needs to, you know, it knows that it's going to make that connection. Uh, I think that sometimes my car's Bluetooth was maybe interfering with that. So it's difficult to say that it's all an automatic problem, but they do know that sometimes there's some problems with Apple's Bluetooth connection. And then we've got reporter problems. So if you really can't get it con to connect, this is sort of your tech support. And then there's actually a customer community built in here. And what that does is it opens up in a web browser and it's just like forums and whatnot. And of course it shows you the app version down here. And that's pretty much the app. It's very simple by default. Uh, they're trying to keep it very simple for that reason so that you know, you're not poking around a whole lot on this thing while you're trying to drive. But uh, this is very cool because it shows you all the different trips that you've gotten. And you can see it started here on a Monday. My day goes from Monday to Sunday like a normal week basically, and it rounds up all your trips. Okay, one of the coolest things about the automatic is not so much the automatic itself, but the fact that it can basically trigger events based on your arriving home or leaving home. So if you have something like a nest, you can use this thing called IFTTT. And here you can see they have what are called recipes. Now, for some of you, this might be old hat, but if you've never seen this before, this is pretty magical. I actually have this one enabled. It's log trips to a Google spreadsheet. Every time I turn off my ignition, whatever it recorded actually goes into a Google spreadsheet so that I'm able to go through and see what my driving habits were like. You can put it in a CSV file, you can put it in Evernote, and look at this, email me about my check engine light. So there's a lot of different stuff, but if you have a connected home already, so if you have Hue lights, when you drive in to your driveway, you can turn on your lights when you get home. It's pretty cool, and there are a bunch, a bunch of these. And what I recommend you do is actually go on to IFTTT and check out all the different recipes. If there's something here that you think that would be a really killer feature, I really like the lights, except that I don't have any Hue lights. So for me, that's of limited use. But it is cool to be able to see all of my trips in one big spreadsheet. Automatic also has an SDK for developers. What that means is that they can make applications specifically for it. So let's take a look at one of those now. So one of the things I have is a Nest, and we can use the automatic control our Nest thermostat. In other words, when I pull into my driveway, I could have it set it back to home, or when I leave, I could set it to away. The only problem with this is that by default, it set my address as San Francisco. And unfortunately, you can't really easily change this within the app. You have to go to the website. So you have to authorize both the Nest and you have to authorize with the automatic. And that means two different logins, two different devices, and it's a very disjointed and sort of strange experience. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, and I didn't have time to troubleshoot it, but you can go on the website and change it yourself. So I guess that's something. One thing I should point out is that I've been using the first generation of the automatic. And while the new version is nice because it offers a built-in GPS, which I found was problematic when my phone wouldn't connect, and it's also fully iPhone certified, and it's sort of shocking to me that it wasn't like that before. But anyway, the really big advancement is also the fact that now you can see real-time results. And for you performance people, that's a huge thing. You can see all of your gauges, all of your information at a moment's notice in real time. Speaking of apps, one of the biggest apps perhaps you might want to use, especially if you're a business traveler, is the Concur app. That's something that helps you track your expenses. And one of the neatest things about this is that if you drive for a living, it will automatically fill out your Concur travel logs. So your expenses are just that much easier to do. And I think that that is probably a killer feature if you drive for your job. Then there are these so-called apps for convenience. And we talked about IFTTT, we talked about Nest, you can also check out if you have your jawbone, you can see your driving in context of fitness goals, are you doing too much or too little, and Pebble, you can see your location of your car on your wrist. Anyway, the point is there are a lot of apps. In fact, there are more. And if you go to the website automatic.com, you're going to find more. But I want to talk about something for just a second that's really frustrating. If you go to the automatic website, you kind of look around and you go, well, wait a minute, where do I log in? There's a lot of motion here to try to get you to buy the darn thing, but where do I actually log in and see my stuff? 
So I went to support and I couldn't find it there. And you actually have to go into your dashboard and then really tiny, there's a little thing that says log in. I don't understand why they don't put log in at the very top. That's something that seems to be very important. And if you wanna see this dashboard view that's incredibly useful, you have to poke around for it like that. I don't understand why companies do this. There's a sort of fetish right now with teeny tiny fonts and it's very, very annoying. Look, I bought your device. Let me get in. Let me see my dashboard. Speaking of the dashboard, here's what it looks like. Now the dashboard is a handy overhead view and it shows you a lot of data that is really not available in the app. So again, why would they obfuscate this? I don't know. But one of the most annoying things about this is the stupid map view. This is another web-based map and if you go in there and you accidentally try to scroll down the page but your cursor gets stuck in the map area, it's going to try to zoom in, zoom out. Very unwieldy. I don't know how much use this is to people but at the same time I really hate these web views where they trap your mouse and you zoom in, zoom out. But anyway, the dashboard shows you a lot of your information. You can go and see what your worst days were, your best days were. You can see a lot of information about the hard braking and the hard accelerations and whatnot. So it's a top-down view. It shows you your fuel, hours, miles per gallon, all that good stuff. Again, I just wish that they would make this a little bit easier to get into and a little more prominent. So the question is, is the automatic worth the $100 price tag? Well, if you're a business traveler, I think it's a no-brainer. Absolutely, this is worth it. If you're somebody who's really into car performance and you want to see all the data that's coming out of your car, absolutely. If you're a parent who has a teenager, then use the companion apps to track your kids. Or if you're one of those people who has Hue lights and a Nest and a whole connected home, it's a pretty cool way to drive into your driveway and have all sorts of things be triggered. For me, did it save money? Eh, a little bit. It trained me not to brake so hard, not to accelerate so hard. I tend to drive my little Kia Forte like it's a sports car. So for me, I think it saved a little bit of money. What's also nice is being able to just look at all of those things, you know, the sort of quantified life that a lot of people enjoy nowadays. But there are some caveats. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to go to the automatic website and check and make sure that your car is compatible. They say that most cars after 1996 are compatible and the new version is supposed to be more compatible than ever. It includes things like diesel support. But I did have a few friends tell me that they had some problems and I actually had quite a bit of trouble getting the thing set up. It took me about an hour and a half to get the thing to actually connect to my iPhone. Also, I had a friend who told me that it fried his battery and the battery cable, both of which had to be replaced in his car, which was made after 1996. Automatic was nice enough to replace the battery, but it's one of those things where it's like, you're probably not gonna buy that after it. It's a great idea, it's a good implementation. There are a few rough edges, but if it's something that you're really, really interested in, and if you do a lot of driving, the automatic is an excellent buy at $100. I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but at the same time, there's not a whole lot on the market that does this sort of thing. So I highly recommend it if you're in one of those categories like I mentioned. Business, hypermiler, parents, all of those people have a great use case for this. Hey guys, well thanks for joining us again. The question is, is the automatic worth the $100 price tag? Honestly, I think it's a nice to have, it's not a must to have. Ask yourself if you're one of those people that we talked about, if you are, then yeah, sure, get it. But at $100, you know what? The advice to not brake too hard, not accelerate too fast, and not drive over 70 miles an hour all the time, that's the kind of stuff that your high school gym coach, you know, who taught the driver's ed class, that's what they should have told you. So as for me, I'm probably gonna sell mine because I don't see a whole lot of use. And I have a Nest and that's nice, but that whole process of setting it up was so clunky, I just don't trust it to do it right. Anyway, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the automatic for your vehicle. Check them out online. See if it's right for you. I've been Victor Greta Jr. This has been Angry Dad Gamer. Thanks for joining. Be sure to subscribe and tell your friends, and I'll see you next time. cost in gas to go somewhere and what's really cool is that it shows the hard acceleration whether or not you went to uh, under whether or not you stayed under 70 miles an hour and whether or not you did any hard braking and again all of these affect your score so here you can see that I did 
three hard brakes and one hard acceleration. That's not good for our fuel efficiency. But if we come back up here to the top, we can actually go into the car mode and it'll show you how much fuel you have, the range that you have left more, based on how well you're actually doing in terms of gas efficiency. The automatic is actually set up to show you a couple of different things. First of all, it'll show you where you parked, it'll show you your gas efficiency, and the little beeps will actually warn you when you're accelerating too fast or braking too hard, both of which affect your gas efficiency. Of course, when you're driving, it's actually going to show you where you're located, but what you can see here is that it shows you the number of miles that you've been driving, and that is actually by tank of gas. So each time you fill up, it's, it's going to go over that. It shows you how many hours, shows you how much fuel you've actually, how much money you've spent on fuel, the miles per gallon that you're getting, and then this right here is your score. So the more hard braking that you do, the more hard acceleration that you do, that number is actually going to go down. And every week it resets and it sends you a notice saying, hey, you did really good or you could improve on this. So as we go, you can scroll through the list here and you can actually see that what we're looking at are all of the trips that we've logged and it shows the miles, how much it your dashboard. The little beep tells you that it's actually plugged in and working. Then you start up your car. And you start up the automatic app. The app will show you that you're currently driving and actually shows your location. As you drive, it gives you a score. Hi everybody, welcome back to Angry Dad Gamer, and this week I'm going to be reviewing something for your car again. It's called the Automatic. It plugs into a little port on your car and actually helps analyze your driving habits and helps you save money on gas. Does it really work? Stay tuned to find out. Damn it! These controls suck! So here's how the Automatic works. You take this little guy, plug it into what's called your ODB port, which is usually under